she'd been taking drugs from the age of 10, that was as a coping me mechanism for her to deal with the domestic abuse that was going on in the household and that was directed towards both her mother and her siblings. So that you know all started off at a very young age for her with a sort of traumatic childhood. Um, later on, as she got old, well, she went into care at around sort of teenage years and on leaving care, she ended up having a couple of children that were actually then adopted um, out to other family or another family due to her drug addiction. So another big trauma in her life to lose her children. She then met another partner and had a daughter. But unfortunately, um, here again, she suffered some domestic abuse, whereby there was an awful lot of co coercive control from her partner. He controlled her finances. He even purchased her drugs and put um, a tracker on the buggy to know where she was at all times. Eventually, that relationship broke up um, and her partner moved away with the daughter at that time. Um, at this point, she had her own tenancy, um, but unfortunately, she was cuckooed, which means that as a vulnerable person, as a vulnerable person, drug dealers went into her property and took it over and, and used as a drug dealing premises. Um, she was kidnapped and held against her will. Um, around this time, her physical health also started to decline because she had a, a leg ulcer from her drug use. So that was another factor that wasn't good in her life. Um, and she often contracted MRSA as, as a result of the leg ulcer, um, along with hepatitis C. So there's now a decline in her physical health from her lifestyle. But on top of this, her mental health is also suffering. Um, and she just kind of went more and more into the drug taking in order to be able to cope with the life that she was living. Her self-esteem was very low, no confidence, and a lot of trust issues. So we've got a multi-agency approach with this individual. Um, and also because of her background and the trauma that she's um, suffered and survived and come, kind of come through, we're using a sort of trauma and fraud informed approach towards um, her recovery. And that involves really understanding the trauma that she's experienced. Um, with regards to what we've actually done, there's sort of lots of big issues around sort of health, but there's also lots of little, what I call little nitty gritty things that we're able to help her with. And to give you some examples of what we've done to date, we've helped her appeal her PIP application. A PIP application is a personal independence payment to help people that have got mental health issues, physical health issues, that helps them financially. So we successfully appealed her PIP application, which is initially declined. That helped her get a little bit more financial stability. So that was a success for us. Um, we've got her a free bus pass to get her around town with her, her poorly leg. Um, we do food bank referrals for her at times. Um, but also in order to help empower her to look after herself, we're also trying to help her with sort of cookery skills and budgeting so that eventually she can become a lot more independent. Um, but it all takes time. Um, we've helped reduce her council tax where she's living at the moment to, to help her financially. Um, Julian House, is, as a lot of people will know, we've pre-COVID times, we were able to uh, run a bike workshop. So she came along to the Basingstoke bike workshop and refurbished a bicycle, which she now still rides when she can, when her leg allows. Um, and she's even now started looking at sort of online courses. We were very fortunate to obtain her a free PC through a local charity that are recycling um, computers and laptops. So she's recently got herself a free PC and she's joining online groups, both with her addiction um, work with her addiction service but also she recently completed an art group an anxiety mm -hmm. course so that's kind of opened up lots of opportunities for her and we're seeing some really good sort of progress with her we've got some very positive news actually this week that next week she's going to be assessed by a local actually supported living facility because we feel at the moment that she's not yet ready to go into another private rental she's still too vulnerable she still needs the support. So we want to try and move her into supported living, carry on making progress until such time she can move safely into a sort of independent living where she's not going to be, you know, hopefully the victim of cuckooing again. 
So it's very complex, which is why it's taking an awful lot of time. Um, but we are making some good progress right now. 